Okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to check out Grunt. And we're going to, anytime like something new or fancy comes out, like a funny, cool sounding name, uh, or like a new, I don't know, you know, some task runner or some service, you know, the first thing that you should always do is kind of like weigh it with what else are you doing currently. Like how well does it help you? Like, of course, you know, you want to try it out. Like, because some people are saying, yeah, yeah, try it out. But the other thing you need to do is kind of read through it and see if it makes sense for you. Does this fit in like with your workflow? Believe it or not, this may not fit in with your current workflow. Um, but there are huge advantages to running something like this. So we're going to just check it out here. And the first thing I always like to see is like, um, you know, uh, well, the first thing I like to see, it's not there, but like, I like to see who's using it, right? Who's already using it. Then I want to just kind of see, OK, hmm, like how do I get started with this? Is this pretty simple? Or Yeah, here we go. Who uses Grunt? You got Twitter, jQuery, Adobe. Um, and then how do you get started? Get started. So we're going to click Get Started. OK. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to have Node.js on our computer. Does anybody not have Node.js on their computer? Okay. You don't have Node.js? Uh, you, you have Node, but you haven't seen it being. OK. All right, so we'll look at that in one second. Anybody else? OK, keep going. So um, I'm just going to like do a simple assumption here and assume that you don't have Node.js. So the first way to get Node.js is go to Google, obviously, type it in, and then go to Node.js. Then what you want to do is you want to install Node.js. So I'm going to kind of do that here because I already have it. Um, I'm not going to walk through long explanations of how to install it, but I'm just going to point you to the website to see how you would get it. And then we're going to see how it works in action. So I've already installed Node.js. It works on Windows. It works on Mac. It works on Linux. Pretty much any kind of like uh, OS that you could think of. The way I like to work with Node.js is I like to just use my terminal. Have I ever installed Node.js on Windows XP? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, let's see. I don't. What is the minimum? I'm sure it's here. I personally don't use Windows XP. So, yeah. The most I've used is Windows 7. Okay. Yes. Good question. Good question. Okay. So yes, if you wanted to install Node.js uh, via Homebrew, so let's go ahead and click this real quick. Um, actually. I actually recommend getting Homebrew, so we'll look at that for a second. But this is for OS X, right? So you have to have a Mac. So what you would do is you would do this simple line here. You copy this into your terminal and paste it there. And what it'll do is it will install Homebrew. And Homebrew is a, um, another service um, that will allow you to kind of use your MacBook like Linux in a way where you can get programs using Brew. <laughs> kind of like how Linux does um, app to get, something like that. But that's all that's doing is here. If I wanted to get this wget, wget is kind of like a URL page crawler. If I wanted to get npm or Ruby, I think actually Ruby comes with Mac. But if I wanted to get any kind of like programming language or something, you know, some new cool thing, I would use some Ruby. So we're going to come back to here, our terminal. The first thing I want to do is I want to just check. I say which npm, and I'm on my Mac, but I'm using this command here, which is basically like a 
unit command that just lets me know where is my node.js, where is npm. So it's in root directory user bin npm. That's where we store all of our like program files. Bin. It's in the bin folder. If you're on Windows, you'll use where npm. And um, although you can probably do this from command prompt, but I don't recommend using command prompt just because um, you know, as a serious developer, like you're going to be working with a lot of Linux developers anyway, and there's going to be back and forth like between both um, lists of commands. Some people like PowerShell, some people like Command Prompt. But that said, I do recommend getting something called Git Bash. And this is a terminal that lets you use all the Linux commands in Windows. So this one's pretty cool. You can also use something called CMDER if you like PowerShell a lot. And it's an emulator. Basically lets you run both Windows and Linux commands in here. I like this one at work. Okay. So now that I've got NPM, what I want to do here first is I want to go back to Grunt. And I want to see, like, what does it say here? So, like, let's just assume. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to install grunt. So we're going to do npm install dash g grunt dash cli. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me an error because I don't have uh, privileges in Mac. So let's do this again. npm install dash g grunt cli. Type in my password. Let it run for a second. And what you're going to see is that it's going to give you all of these downloads that it's doing. You basically download a grunt CLI into your command, into your MacBook, or into your computer. So once we've got that going, then what we want to do next is in our folder, so I'm going to do it the terminal way. I'm just going to use ls to check what's inside my folder. I've got index, script, Style, all the stuff that we wanted. Now I am going to create now. And by the way, like if you're not familiar with some of these commands, that's okay. Like I will tell you about them later. Um, I'm going to create. I'm just going to do npm init. So we're still using npm. This is our node package manager, and I'm going to write init. And the first thing it's going to ask me is, what's the name of your going to press enter to accept whatever it's telling me. Version 1, no description, because this is just for me testing today. Uh, entry point, script.js, that's fine. We'll come back to it later. Everything looks good. Do I have a Git repository? We'll go over that. Author, keywords, everything. It all looks OK. So the thing to like focus on here is I'm creating a JSON object. And now, if I do ls, I can see that I've created a package JSON here. If I just wanted to see what was in my package JSON, I could do cat package JSON, and it would output to my terminal everything that was created for me automatically. Does that make sense? This JSON file here, I didn't go to Sublime, create a new file, type in all of this JSON for myself. It did it for me, and that's the first step for automation. So now, yes? Yeah. Sure. So I'm on the grunt page. The first command here was npm install dash g grunt cli. The second command was npm install. Actually, npm init. I'm sorry. So right here, I'll highlight it for you. Can you see that? Cool. Again, don't worry too much about like trying to copy everything because I'll videotape it on my computer. So I will put it up there. I want you guys to like, track like, you're a code and listen at the same time. <laughs> OK. Um, so 
The next thing we need to do is we need to create a grunt file. So I'm going to again use a Unix command called touch. Touch allows me to create a new file. I'm going to touch a grunt file dot js and then I'm just going to type in subl which is my command for my sublime. And then that's going to open back up my folder with all the project files. The next thing we need to do is we need to create our grunt file. So what is a grunt file? Does anybody know? Yes. Okay. So here on this page, We're just going to start off with copy and paste, because I think that might be easier. And then we'll talk about how we'll uh, automate some of this stuff. So I'm going to just come down here. I'm just going to paste into my JSON file. I'm in my package JSON, by the way. And I'm just going to, like typical JSON in JavaScript, I'm just going to add the line here, dev dependencies. So what are these dev dependencies? The first one is run. The next one is called JSUnit. The next one is NodeUnit. And this one's called Uglify. So the thing about working with Grunt is if you think about it this way, it allows you to get all these different tools that are out there on the internet. Some guys like yourselves tonight who didn't come to the meetup, sitting at home, I don't know, drinking a beer, eating pizza, are coding like the next tool right, that you can use, like Uglify or JS Hand. We're going to start off with just what Grunt recommends for us. You may not use all of these, but I'm going to use Uglify. So, Uglify is a tool that allows me to take my JavaScript and obfuscate it, minify it, without me having to go to the server and find a minifying uh, website. So I'm going to save my package JSON, and I'm just going to do npm install. We'll let that run for a second. You see the spinning kind of prompt right here? That means it's waiting. It's also downloading stuff. But it's basically, what is it downloading? It's downloading the trail of JS hints, Uglify, Node Unit, all the stuff I need. Right, I may not need all of them, actually. I did NPM install. Correct. It launched the um, package manager basically to down. It told the package manager in PM to download these files for me. Okay. So that's cool. So over here now in my project folder, I've got node modules. And all these folders were built for me. And these folders each represent. Um, libraries that I can use to be able to work with my project here and do things like I'll apply with JS hand. So we're going to try both of those real quick. So now in a grunt file, we have to define basically like what we want the grunt file to do. And going down this page further here, you can see this is how you set up your grunt um, kind of initially. You always need to follow this convention module.exports, and it looks a little bit like JavaScript, actually, because it is JavaScript. Um, it's equal to a function which takes a grunt, a grunt variable. Right? And inside here, we're going to do stuff. We're going to do stuff when grunt init. But before it init, we need to configure what the init is going to do. So we want, we've got something here called pkg. So for starter, starting out, what you want to do is just basically copy you know, most of this stuff here and give it a try. Um, 
So we're going to get our package, which is in our package JSON file. We're going to read that package, and we're going to then down here uh, public file. We're going to try out public file first. All right. So I am going to just copy this here. It's the way I learned. Kind of copy paste and then work your way up, right? Um, so over here, everything kind of like has been set up for me, so I don't have to really go in here and edit stuff, but I can. And I'm going to. So we're going to start off with the options. So we've got a banner here. And this banner basically means like take my JavaScript file, which is in this SRC folder. It's actually an SRC property, but it's going to point to a folder called SRC, and it's going to take whatever JavaScript file I've defined in my package, and then it's going to build it into a destination folder. And it's going to append this little banner here for me. So uh, let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to create with my Unix command here. I'm just going to do what it's telling me to do. So I'm going to uh, so here I'm going to make a source folder. Ls. There's my source folder. And then I'm going to cd into my source folder. And I am going to just call it. Actually, let's cd out. I'm going to move my script.js into my src folder. So now it goes over here, right? That's my cool code. And I'm going to just rename this file here script.js. It's kind of like the cookie code. So then, let's see here. What else do we need to do? Do we need to do anything? All right. I'm just going to hit grunt. All right. Did we see what it did? Yeah. It created this build folder right up here. And if I look at it, there's my code. I'll minify it. Everybody cool so far with this? On the same page? Anybody like have any questions? A little thoughts and takes on it. Yes? How are the options set for one of these modules? So each one, each option, you can like research on the NPM page, which we're gonna go to next. Uh, so, like every tool you get, like when you buy it, like at wherever store, it comes an instruction manual. But unfortunately, that instruction manual is like kind of hard to find. Not really, but like if you're new to this kind of you know automation stuff, you would go to npm, and then you would look up grunt contrib uglify or grunt contrib ksn. So we're gonna do that real quick. So we're going to go to npm in our Google browser, or uh, Safari, whatever you may have you, npm js. And we're going to find packages. And we've got a huge teddy bear that, what is that thing? No thanks. OK, so I'm going to look up grunt contrib uglify, right? And I'm going to get back this manual page here. This tells me everything about this library in front of the of the file, what I can and can't do for my options. So in order for us to first use this, actually, I'm going to skip that for a second. So here are my options. Angle, compress, beautify. So what does beautify do? It turns on beautification for generated 
So this probably takes code and makes it the opposite of uglyfied, it makes it beautified, so you can read it in human format, right? Um, here, this one, I think, uh, allows you to do uh, compression with default objects, so be more, um, make your file compressed. Let's see, I like to just kind of jump down and see examples. So, here it says basic compression, run init config. We're familiar with this already. This is just configuring what our init function should do. So run functions, right? I want to have this amplify, um, define. Go in here, my target files are going to be um, output via JS. Output's going to be my input. So if I have two JS files I'm working with two people, I'm responsible for input one, the other person's responsible for input two, then um, we're going to take both of those files and then we're going to just output it and minify it. And this is how you do that here. If we scroll further down, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Do we have anything interesting? Uh, some people don't like to console log or don't want to have their console log show up in their script. So you can have uh, run also take off the console functions to drop console. So if you specify that as your option, then you will also remove all the console logs. In fact, we could probably try that right now. So I'll do something in here. So I'm going to go back to my regular JavaScript file right here. And just do something here. Console log hello world. And then I'm just going to go back to my index. To, oh, no, actually, I have to grunt. I'm going to grunt, ran without errors. And then let's just make sure that this is set up properly. So we're going to change this now from saying script.min.js because that was our copied and pasted script min.js. And we're going to do build. And we're just going to copy, well, we're going to just say my folder. I'll show you how to do this without having to type all this later, if we have time. Or I'll show you at least the point. So I'm going to open this page back up here. I inspect element. Okay. Uh, don't worry about that first error, it's just jQuery. But do you, does everybody see the hello world here? Okay, so that shows me my app's working, my app, my web page. Um, is anybody unclear right now? Okay, cool. All right, so uh, if I come back here, you can see in like my minified file that I still have the console log, which is kind of lame. Developer and I'm like, you know, outputting like a final production thing to the world. It's kind of like weird if they see my console logs. Like, is there a bug in this? I don't want them to see that. So, let's come back here, do check my handy manual, and let's see, compress. So, in my options, I'm just going to copy this here, and I am going to add this. Like a JSON file, right? Separated by comma. And I'm just gonna like to make sure everything looks okay. All right. So now come back here. Grunt. Let's check this. It's gone. Does everybody see that? Console log is gone. No more unprofessional code. Right. So does that answer your question about setting options? Cool. Okay. Um, so now let's kind of look at this in more detail because, like, I just copied and pasted code here, but I haven't really explained to you like what really is going on. So in JavaScript, well, in JavaScript, uh, you have functions. You can have variables. 
run functions inside functions. It's kind of basic. If you don't know this stuff, I actually have a bunch of little courses I do. It's probably about it. Um, but basically here, what I'm doing here is I'm passing in an object here, which are basically my options to this init method, run. And I'm telling run, hey, I have an ugly I have a build. And later down here, I'm using a method called load npm pass. And run is going to line this up with the library. If I don't have this library that I declare it here, run will throw an error and say, I don't know what that is. So I have to make sure that I did that npm install and make sure the library code is here before I can actually load this task in. So once I've loaded in the task, then up here, it will know how to uglify. It will know how to build. I'm just defining options, what kind of options I want for my uglify, for my build, where I'm going to point the folder to. But this is where the magic is going to happen. And then down here, we've got something called register task. So when I type that grunt word into my terminal, by default, it Does that make sense? Yes? Uh, yeah, there you can. So the nice thing is, like, the short and long to answer your question is, you don't need any of these options here. If you just run the npm path by itself, um, it will just do what it's supposed to do, but it won't pass any of your options, which is kind of weird, actually, because you want to set, hey, here's my folder, or here's the name, pkg name, just to answer that part of here. Like if we were to inspect package JSON, remember we built this a minute ago. The name of this folder is my folder. Right? But if I come back here and I just say, okay, I don't need this. I don't care about this. And I just say uglify, then it's not going to know what PKG is here. So I'm going to have to make sure I take this out. So I'm going to take it out. Okay. And that's also why I also didn't write, like I hard-coded in my script, my SRC folder name. And down here, I would just have to call this script, right, dot minjs, which means I'd have to come back over here and make this called script dot minjs also. Yeah, so if I want to have like, exactly, so if I come back to here, you can look at it for a second here. Do you see how this first line here says my folder 2015? That came from PKG name. Without this, we wouldn't get this little nice banner. So I wouldn't be able to know, oh, well, what file was this? When did I make it? That's what that is. Okay, so let's see here. We're going to jump a little bit because of time. Um, yes? Sorry, so can you go back to the run file? Okay. Yeah. So, because this, you know, today is kind of grunt. And then I'll talk about gulp a little bit. Um, that way, like, you guys kind of both have those. Uh, so, another common thing that people want to do is concatenate their files, right? So, we're going to look that up. I don't know how to do it. I'm just pretending. 
I'm going to go to npm like we did before, npm JS. I'm going to go to the front page and I'm just going to do grunt contrib and I'm going to look for concat. That looks like it, so I'll just do that. So here it's saying get started. So to get started, the first thing I need to do is come back to my terminal. Again, if you're not using terminal, then or some kind of Windows equivalent, um, I can like talk to you about that at a later time if you're interested. But the last time we made our grunt file, we copied and pasted from grunt, right? I just came here and I created this package JSON by just sort of like, well, I used npm install to do it. <coughs> But let's say I want to modify that, in, um, that package JSON, which is what controls all these libraries, allows me to download stuff. If I wanted to add a concat, I would just have to come in here and type this, right? Then I don't really know which version I want, so that's where I get kind of stuck. So instead of typing it like this, which is totally acceptable, we're going to use what npm recommends here, and we're just going to say npm install grunt contrib. I could copy and paste it too. Dash dash save dash dash dev. Okay. So I'm going to come back now here, and I just look at my package JSON, and there it is. Meet up today is about like letting the computer do the tasks. You don't need to do these tasks anymore. Your computer's smarter than you. Okay. I'm kidding. You're smarter than the computer. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to load in these tasks, right? We need to load in the contrib concat method. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna copy paste here. I'm gonna copy this line here. And then I'm going to come back here, and remember in this section here, I'm loading in the library. That's all I'm doing. It's called plugin, it's a fancy word, that provides the concat task. And I just paste it here. Okay? That's cool, but I just only loaded in the library so we got to set our options. So does anybody remember how to do that? This is where I hand out freebie stuff. Show of hands. Right. Yes, but more specifically, please. Yeah. So he's right. Set up your options. And then inside your options, make sure that you do it npm js. And follow um, exactly, you, can, uh, you follow any of these usage examples here. So this is. Basically, what you want. So, when I meant be more specific, I just meant go to manual. Okay. All right. So, cool. Um, what we got here? Okay. So, we're going to do that. We're going to get this. Um, we're going to look at this first one right here. We're just going to copy this here. And actually, we're not going to copy everything. Remember, this is the um, object, if you will, for concat. So I'm just going to copy concat. And I'm going to come down here, maybe before um, uglify, just so like for sanity purposes, I know that this one, because I'm going to do it first. Um, I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, and then JSON is always comma separated, so we make sure we're good with that. Then here, 
I don't have an intro.js file. I don't have a project file. Building from, I'm building from here. With this disk, that's the distribution that goes to final production. And really, when we build like real world websites, like web 3.0, I don't know where we are now. But uh, we're always working out of a disk folder. Like what you see on the web is really a disk folder with minified everything. So it's like, super fast. Uh, nobody loads in all of their files. No one does it like that example I showed you, the vjman.com way. Right? Unless you're using WordPress. I got the impression it's not critical information. Uh, you can't actually get the end. That's not the information. Yeah, this order doesn't matter. Like somewhere, somewhere, it's just going to be that. Oh. I'll show you. So if I want to make concat happen before uglify, I just type it here in my array. So when I run run, it'll concat and uglify. I could throw in one more thing here, and I'm going to do that real quick for time. So I want a JS hint. Yeah. Um, that's one way to think of it. What, don't say dependency injection though, because that's an Angular term. So, um, but yes, it is kind of like a, a library, if you will. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, copy this in, and I think we already have JS hint. So I'm just gonna grab that too, and I'm just gonna use the default for JS hint, which I think is down here. Um, Yeah, here we go, this one. So I'm just going to copy this one also. So I'm going to do my JS hint before my concat. And then if I wanted to, like if I was working with SAS and trying to be processes, I could add in one more task here for SAS. You know, so that way I get all my JS files done, and I can do my SAS files and convert them all to CSS. But I'm using Blunt to do all of that for me. No longer am I doing it myself. So JS hint uh, will allow me to kind of review my code before it hits production to see if there's any weird errors. Um, concatenate will combine all my JS files once it's done. And then, um, in fact, I'm going to show you something separate, actually. I'm going to take out this JS hint here. And I'm just going to load it in. Front load npm tasks, front contrib. JS hint, just make sure I have it. And I'm just going to say over here, JS hint. Okay. I got uglify, I've got concat. So I'm going to go back here and review this code real quick. So I don't have this intro JS or project JS, but I'm going to go ahead and make them. So I'm just going to CD into my SRC folder here. I'm going to ls. I only have this script.js file. So actually, why don't I just do this for. Um, time purposes, I'll just do my script.js and then I want it to go to dist.build.js. We're going to be messy a little bit with this, um, but that's okay. So the first thing I want to do here is also just paste in that JS hint. Again, order really doesn't matter, but I'm just going to I'm just going to do src. Thank you for coming. I'm going to do grunt js hint. Okay. So here, if I just type grunt js hint, before we were typing grunt, and that would by default do all of the other tasks for us, right? Concatenate and uglify. But js hint, I don't really want that to happen. I don't want JS hint to happen in the same line as my default. I'm going to do run JS hint, and this will go through and check if I have any errors in my code. So let's make an error. 
I'm going to just say console, I'm just going to say log or console log. And I'm just going to do grub js hint. Oops, let me get in here. Okay. So here's all the problems. It's kind of like your ID, right? Like it will tell you, oh, here's your errors. Something wrong. So I've been saying, I'm close string, close string. I have a lot of errors now. So what could be the problem? Well, here's the root. So I don't have this console wrong. So I'd have to go back there and fix that before I could go to production. So I'm going to fix it. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what was wrong with my code. Now if I JS hint, there's no errors. Then I can just do grunt, right? And then my code gets built. And let's see here. Let's look at dist built JS, right? So let's see here. Cat uglify. Okay, so because I told you guys it's getting messy, uh, the dest folder is different from the other dest folder. So I have one called dist and one called build. So it uglified also, but it uglified over here. So you guys probably know how to like correct the paths, right? If you wanted to on your own. Okay, is everybody cool with grunt? Speaking of paths, like, uh, do you recommend so each separate plugin for grunt we have checking multiple files separately? Um, I'd probably make it cumulative for something. You know, like I would probably set up like what is an SRC because this is JavaScript, right? So I could write stuff up here and I could just define my paths and then just put that as a variable here instead of like following what they told me on front. And that would make it easier for me to keep track of what's going on. So like right after you can cat it, uh -huh. you can take for uglify, you can make the source build up JS. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But like I said, there are many ways to do it. So don't don't think one way is the right way or not. Okay. So um, how many people thought this was a little overwhelming? No? You guys are all like rock stars? Cool. Okay. Yes. Who knows what yeoman is? Can anybody give like a concise answer? Okay. Anybody else? It tries to load all this stuff. Okay. I'm gonna give you guys the stuff because you answer question. It's a scaffolding tool. Yes, it's a project. So, you know, like, like I said, some of this is like still manual, right? Uh, you know, what's the point in doing all this stuff if you can just have something else do it for you? Well, there's beauty in doing it yourself. First, if you kind of understand what's going on under the hood, then it becomes easier to use like even more like crazy stuff. But if you just kind of like go to the most advanced thing first and then like work your way down, it's very difficult. And then it's just going to make the learning curve also very hard for you to go further than beyond. So Yeoman is this nice scaffolding tool. And scaffolding really just means like create a folder, a project folder for me. So 
I'm going to use the same commands I've been using all this time, and I'm just going to use npm install dash g yo. And I need privileges, so I have to do that again. Type in my password. So what that's going to do is it's going to install this Yeoman scaffolding tool. And let's read about it real quick. What does it do? So right out of the box, Yeoman creates a new application for you. Creates a blend file or a belt file you choose. And also adds dependencies like Bower. Um, it also uses the grunt system. And Bower is a package manager, so you can go use Bower instead of going on the web and finding jQuery or Angular or some new library. You can just have Bower search for that library and it returns back to you. Nice. That's why it looks like a bird. Anybody kind of new? Yes? Am I, so the question is, am I working locally? No, like for like small projects, I really don't. I just kind of work locally and then push up. Uh, so it's done. So now we're going to use it. And we're, to use it, we're just going to click Getting Started, Use Yeoman. So we already have um, Grunt. And I think I already have Bower. I'm pretty sure I do. So I'm just going to do which Bower. There it is. I'm going to clear this so we don't have all this mess up here again. And I'm going to just do, so before I can use Yeoman, I have to install the library kind of like it is in front. Um, and this is a web application. So I'm going to create a generator web app. And I have to also install this globally. But then once I get down here, I'll show that to you in a second. So we'll just copy and paste this line here. Actually, I think I already have it, so let's just check. Oops. Okay, I don't have it. So let's just go ahead and install it. Sudo. So that's going to install it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a project. Uh, All right, it's telling me it's going to take a minute. Does anybody have any questions so far? Has this been a good meetup so far? Okay. So do you find you use your Yes, I do. I use it a lot more than I use when I'm like just unless I'm doing like testing, because like when I, where I work, we use a huge PHP like working off of the Zen framework. So there's not a lot of like room for me to go in and start using Node. So in order for me to come up with a new task or a new idea, I just have to build it on my folder locally, like on my desktop, run you know, some Node commands. Then if the project works in Node, I just go back and I figure out how to like do it for PHP or something like that. that. Make it work with the Zen. That's kind of the process I'm in right now, like with my company's software. But um, it just seems like a few times I've tried it. Uh-huh. Uh, Yeoman? Yeah. Well, let's find out. Uh, so we're going to just do, we've already installed the web app. So now we're going to just go, let's check our directory. So I think we are in, yeah, my user directory. So I'm going to cd over to desktop. 
then I'm going to make a directory and I'm just going to say my yo project just like it tells me to. You don't have to follow this name, you can do whatever you want. We're going to cd into it. Okay. And then we're just going to say yo web app. And it says, do I want to like help them figure out statistics? No, I don't. So uh, we get this lot of nice little man here. He's going to ask me what I like, SAS, Bootstrap, Modernizer. So yeah, I'll take all three. Um, SAS is cool, Bootstrap is I don't like Bootstrap. Uh, I think it's useless. So actually, if I don't want it, I'll just press space, and that will take it out for me. And then modernizer, no, because like I want to like keep track of my own JS files for myself. But I do like SAS, so I'll press enter. And would I like to include jQuery? Yes, I would. Boom. Creates the power JSON, the package JSON, the growth file. Creates a git ignore. I don't have to worry about like setting a git ignore for my git stuff. Plus all this stuff. It creates app folder, scripts, and HAS, SES, index.html. Gives me a fav icon. And let's see here. I don't know. Let's check it out. So I'm going to uh, go over to create a new tab here while well, that's loading in the background. I don't know what else it's doing. So this might be what your question was. Is it a little buggy? Maybe. Um, so I'm going to sublime. And there it is. There's my folder, right? So let's find out what this is. There's my fav fav icon. <laughs> oh, actually, is that? Yeah, there's my fav icon. Made this little guy for me. Made me an Apple. Gives you a, a start name to help file. Yeah. yeah. So I don't have to build but all this. What's it doing? Is it going out and checking for newest version of Brent Mauer, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. And it's installing that globally? Well, the first time you do it, when you do it globally. After that, yeah. In order for me to tell you what's happening next time, I have to kind of follow the blog and see, oh, these are some new updates that came out. Is there a way to add Like new updates? Well, just like, like right now we're starting a project. Let's say if I want to use your own project. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, 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 it is. Um, for example, I'll just do it real quick. Um, let's just say I need the Angular. Uh, Bower install Angular. Does that work? So Bower came with this in, uh, Yeoman, by the way. So what it'll do is it's going to download the newest version of Angular, jQuery, any dependencies for Angular. And it's going to create that folder here. So now I can like, have jQuery and Angular. I didn't have to go and fetch it off the internet. It's set it up with my project. It's already there for me. This is now an Angular project. And here, let's check out our grunt file, because that's what we were doing before. All of this is taken care of for me, too. I have my exports. Um, I have a lot of other things going on in here. But the main thing to kind of look at is the init config, because that's what we saw before. So I'm just going to hit by default. I'm going to just check it out real quick. Uh, all the way down here, register task. Um, and let's see here. So I, what I want to do, just to, whenever I get one of these project folders, I want to check it out just to see if it works. So I'm going to use a command called grunt serve. And what that'll do And then let's say if I want to edit stuff on here, you know, I'll just go ahead and uh, let's see here, come back to my index.html file, and let's see, I don't like this stuff here, so I'm just going to take this to jQuery LA. Save, boom. I didn't have to refresh my page. 
I can just do all of my stuff in here. I can also do my SAS. Um, everything. Take care of all of this stuff here and change the body background to uh, blue. I don't know. Oh, that's color. Well, it changes the color. Is this useful? You guys like presentation? Okay. I'm going to do really quickly, I'm going to just show you Gulp. And there's Gulp also, which a lot of people use. And Gulp.js is, it's pretty cool. It's similar to, um, it's similar to Grunt. And I think personally uh, that Gulp is actually a little bit Um, when I first heard about Gulp, I was actually, when I first heard about Grunt, I was already using Gulp. Um, and because Gulp looks a little bit more like Node.js, where you require the Gulp um, so a variable, then you do some tasks, and then you write the function, then you run Gulp. So I think Gulp is pretty easy. Um, there are a lot of good tutorials, like if you want to get started with this. Uh, let's see here. So here we've got list of articles if you wanted to get started with this. This tag tree info, like, it's pretty cool. They have a good tutorial on how to use Gulp, kind of like how we were already doing. So you're going to npm install, save dev, then you're going to run some processes. It's a little different though. You add in your SES code this way, you know, So it's similar. I think it's easier. But the reason I like Grunt is because more people like flock to Grunt. And it's like really writing JavaScript. You know, like so in my opinion, uh, this is more like writing with JS. So whatever your preference is, you know, like at the end of the day, if it works for you, use that. Okay. So that's all I got for you. Um, is everybody uh, cool with this meetup so far? Does anybody want to ask questions at some point? Yeah, so it basically is like in um, Linux, like if you do one task, you pipe another task, you do another task, like change Exactly. That's why I think it's a little easier. Right. 